Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well, yesterday was one hell of a day and one hell of a night, wasn't it people, I hope all of you enjoyed the four uploads that I put out on deadline day, what a fiasco, what a party we had pretty much, but the roller coaster ride was unbelievable. And pretty much summed up exactly how the entire transfer window went. Not just for Chelsea, but for everybody. What a window. What a window it was. Um, from start to finish, loads of entertainment, loads of blockbuster news, loads of up and downs. And yesterday, we flipping had an up and down. Even as Chelsea fans, Heart Attack FC at its peak yesterday night, where we all thought the Saul deal had collapsed. We all thought Griezmann had collapsed. We all thought De Jong had collapsed. And then, boom, out of nowhere... Nah, it's all good. Everything's gone through. Everything's gone through. Chelsea, two minutes before the deadline, handing in a deal sheet. Cheers, Marina. Flipping out. <laughs> but what we're going to do today is have a look at Chelsea's transfer window. And try and, at the end of this video, rate it out of 10. 10 being absolutely incredible. And 1 being uh, an utter farce, really. Atrocious. We'll rank it at the end, but let's go through the detail. Because Chelsea's transfer window hasn't been all about the incomings. It's not just been about the players that have come in. It's about the players that have gone out. And in terms of net spend... Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, talking about good business. You know what? In business class, yeah, for anyone that takes up a business degree at university, I swear your 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 uh, curriculum or your syllabus or whatever should be based on Chelsea Football Club because you will be getting good teachings in terms of business just by looking at how Chelsea do business. Marina Grenovskaya has turned into an absolute monster in terms of business. And before we get into the outgoings and the ingoings and all the money, I want to say something on Kunde. Because yesterday there was a whole thing about Kunde where we heard the director of Sevilla, Monchi, come out and say, look, there's a release clause. If you want uh, Kunde, pay the release clause. If not, he's staying at Sevilla. And there was a debate on social media whether Marina should do it or not. By doing it, yes, we get Kunde, but we come out looking weak. And we come out looking weak in the long run, in terms of future transfer windows, in terms of other clubs looking and going, ah, oh, you know what, she's not all that tough after all, is she? Just push her buttons a bit, put a release clause, and she'll pay it. You come out looking weak. Chelsea, I'm sure, had that in mind. But if they did decide to not take any action and not trigger the release clause, well, they don't get the player. So it's one or the other. You can't have it both ways. And Chelsea, at the end of the day, decided to take option number two, which is to not trigger the release clause. Okay, we won't have Kunde, but we come out of this looking strong. Strong like Donkey Kong. Yeah, <laughs> I've used Donkey Kong as a reference two or three times lately. I don't know why. I have no idea why Donkey Kong is in my head. But anyway, we've come out of that looking solid. Yeah absolutely solid full-on peak 1980s Arnold Schwarzenegger solid you know Sylvester Stallone Rocky Rambo solid I'm talking Bruce Lee sort of solid yeah that we've come out of this transfer window looking intimidating right because we don't we don't play games we don't we don't mess about we don't mess about and Marina has laid the law down simple you want to talk about release clauses and all of that you didn't want to negotiate okay you keep the player Fine, we'll be back later. Yeah, and we'll be back later. You wait, in January or next summer, we will be back in for Kunde. But for now, big opportunity for Trevor Chalaba. Massive opportunity for Trevor Chalaba. This is your time, Trev. This is your time. There's nothing stopping you for you to establish yourself in the first team now. I hope it works and I hope this is a plan. I hope this is a plan for Trevor uh, and a to, to, to end up on a very, very good pathway in terms of really becoming a first-team player at Chelsea Football Club. Hopefully, things are just meant to be for Trev. Sometimes it happens that way. But anyway, that's the thing with Kunde. We'll see what happens going forward into January and then next summer. But let's talk about the outgoings, right? For, for the incomings, we had Lukaku that we bought for £97 million. We managed to get Saul for a loan fee of 5 million euros, which equates to about 4.2 million pounds or four, let's just call it four, let's just call it five. Yeah, let's just call it five because five is five, let's just call it five. So uh, 97 million plus five, 
equals £102 million spent. Bettinelli was a free transfer as our third goalkeeper. Those were our incomings. So we spent £102 million, right? Let's look at the outgoings now and let's see exactly what Chelsea have done in terms of players sold. So... Tammy Abraham left Chelsea Football Club for £34 million, but we have a release clause. We have a release clause in for Tammy Abraham, uh, or buyback, sorry, not a release, but we have a, we have a buyback first option on Tammy, where after 2023, we can go back in for was it £65 million, I think it is, or something around there. But anyway, we add pretty much £30 million or £35 million on top of what we already have now, and we can get him back. Lovely jubbly. We'll see what Mourinho does with Tammy Abraham. And if he turns him into a monster, well, we shall execute that when Lukaku's time at Chelsea comes to an end. So that's a good thing. So Abraham, 34 million. Tomori has left the club for 25 million pounds. Mark Gurhi has gone to Crystal Palace for 18 million pounds. Livramento left for 5 million pounds. Victor Moses left for 4 million pounds. Lewis Bate left for 1.5 million pounds. Pert Harris left for 1.5 million pounds. Equa left for 1.5 million pounds. Simu left for 1.5 million pounds. Giroud left for just under a mil, 900,000 pounds. Ugbo left for 6.5 million pounds. Unbelievable. Zappa Costa left for 8.5 million pounds. And most recently, Kurt Zuma left for 26 million pounds to West Ham, which brings our total money that we have managed to get from outgoing players a hundred and thirty four million pounds and you can thank these three right here it's down to these these lovely people <laughs> who we once criticized but now they know exactly what they're doing bruce buck on the right hand side petter check who has been fantastic since he's been in that role amongst the board on the left and the queen herself marina granovskaya in the middle Unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff. £134 million we've managed to bring in, right? And we've spent £102 million. Yet we've improved the squad. We've managed to get rid of players that are not even squad players for good money. Let's talk about the players that we've let go. Tammy Abraham was a first team squad member, right? That's one. Tomori was a first team squad mem member. That's two. Okay, fair enough. Mark Gurhi was not. Livramento was not. Moses, we thought he'd left already. Uh, <laughs> he's, he wasn't. Bate hasn't even played senior football for Chelsea. I think he's maybe played one or two games tops. He came, came on, I think, in a Carabao Cup game or something. I'm not sure. Uh, Pert Harris, same situation. Hasn't played senior football. Equa, Simu, same situation. Giroud, we let go, but, you know, very well served. Thank you very much. See you later, Olivier Giroud. Ugbo, similar situation. Played in pre-season. Apart from that, not really seen much of Ugbo in a senior shirt for Chelsea Football Club. He's gone. Zappa Costa wasn't even really part of the squad. Let's have it right. In recent years, he was under Antonio Conte, but not now. He's gone. And Kurt Zuma was a first team member. Let's have it right. Um, well, first team squad member. So if we're talking about first team squad members or players that have recently at least been in this team, we're talking Tammy Abraham, Tomori, uh, Giroud and Zuma. The rest we've made big money from. And they don't even serve much purpose to the squad. That, that, that is good business. And then the, talking about the players we've brought in, Lukaku, Saul. Honestly, fantastic. We've improved the squad. We've gotten rid of what people like to call Deadwood. For me, it's not necessarily Deadwood. It's some very, very good youth talent that haven't made their mark in the first team yet. Possibly won't at all. Many players have been on loan, just hovering about, and we decided to make some money out of them. And a couple of players who were in the squad that don't really find much of a place in the squad anymore, and we've managed to sell them for very, very good money. And put a couple of clauses in there in order to make sure that we can get them back like a Tammy Abraham for example so 134 million pounds spent 134 million pounds brought in 102 million pounds spent we've ended up after this transfer window having improved the squad with a 32 million pound profit <laughs> We have made a profit after the transfer window, yet we've managed to sort out our striker problem. We've sorted out our midfield problem. We've, I would like to say, somehow sorted out replacing Zuma in a way because Chalaba has made his mark and Thomas Tuchel loves what he sees and we all do. So fingers crossed he really establishes himself. 
We are very, very well equipped and well covered now. We are absolutely ready to go. And now it brings me on to this point. What do we do with this squad now? What do we do with this squad? And might I add, for Saul, there is an option to buy at the end of the season. So much like Kovacic was for us in terms of a loan deal and then we bought him in the end. At the end of the season, we have an option to buy Saul for 40 million euros. That's it. Piece of cake. About 34 million pounds or so if we're converting into pound sterling. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, but now we talk about this squad now. With Lukaku in. With Saul in. Where should we go? What should we be aiming for now? What can we achieve? Having sorted out our striker problem, having sorted out our fourth choice midfield problem, sorted. Chalaber in the squad came in at the flipping right time because Zuma's left the club now. What should we be competing for? And I think I'd I'd be I'd be not not the only one to say this. I'm sure many 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 of you agree now. We need to be competing for the Premier League title now. As far as I'm concerned, after this transfer window, we are title favourites now. I see it like that. Man City did not get their striker. They do not have a recognised striker. By recognised striker, I mean an Aguero. I mean a number nine. Someone that's up there as a striker. They ain't got one. Jesus isn't a, a an all-in, well, all-in, all-out striker. He's not that. Um, he's a forward man, but he's not a proper you know, proper striker, proper number nine. He's not that. Um, Ferran Torres, he's not an all-in proper striker either. Um, Man United, they've managed to get make some very, very good signings, but there's still the question mark on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. What's going to happen there? Um, in terms of Liverpool, well, Liverpool, very, very good team, but they haven't done any business whatsoever except for Konate. And that was at the start of the window. They haven't upped their squad whatsoever. Yes, they've managed to have players come back from injury, but apart from that, They've got the same squad. So are they going to be able to compete? I think they'll be up there. But I really don't think they'll be up there in competing for the title towards the end of May. Um, or the beginning of May. When the title, when the season ends. In terms of the other teams, you're talking, what, Tottenham? They kept Harry Kane. Fair play. Can they get that working? You know, is there water under the bridge? We'll wait and see. Arsenal, no comment. Um... <laughs> Arsenal have spent the most money and yet the squad's gone worse. I have no idea how you do that. They've spent the most. They've spent. They've outspent us, United. They've outspent everyone, even even City, who got Grealish. Right? Arsenal have outspent, yet the squad's worse. I I don't understand. I don't understand. Anyway, and that's their bottom of the table now. But we'll see what happens. Amazon filming the cameras, fantastic. We'll wait and see what goes down at the Emirates. Flipping amazing. Um. Anyway. Apart from that, Leicester City, we know they're not going to be competing for the title. Chelsea have all the tools necessary now to go and win the Premier League title. And on top of that, with the depth that we have in this squad now, you've seen the two or three teams that we could put out onto a pitch. And now adding Saul into the mix, I mean, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Our four central midfielders are Kante, Jorginho, Kovacic, Saul. That's madness. That is absolute madness to think that that is our midfield. Teams would kill to have that sort of midfield, right? So even the Champions League, we need to be thinking of retaining. We need to. Win the Premier League title, retain the Champions League. That should be the objective. And if we can get a cup competition on the way, that would be fantastic. And we must win the Club World Cup in December. We must. I'm sorry. We, we've, we've lost that before. We, that's the only thing we've never won in our history. Win it and we would have completed the lot. Completed the lot. We would have won every single trophy that there is to win. In the history of football or English football, that is everything completed right if we win the club world cup so fingers crossed we get that done but coming to the end now rating this transfer window out of 10 chelsea's transfer window considering the plays we brought in considering the outgoings the money um that we've managed to recuperate and make and even end up in a profit how do i rate this window out of 10 i would get this an 8.5 8.5 it would have been a 10 if we managed to get a kunde but i'm Fully, fully, fully understanding in terms of the circumstances involved and to come out of that looking strong. And I think we've done just that. Yesterday, there was a little bit of a meltdown on social media. Oh, we should have we should have triggered the release clause. We should have done it. Now, everyone's changed their tune. Everyone's have managed to sleep over it. Everyone's managed to look at it again and go, nah, you know what? Marina made the right call. She made the right call. We'll be all right. 
And that is exactly why Marina is doing the business that she's doing. And Petr Cech alongside her, Roman Abramovich on top, uh, Bruce Buck alongside her, everyone doing an absolutely incredible job and pulling off stuff like this because they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing and they know what they're doing long term, not just short term, long term. They know exactly what they are cooking. So, yeah. Lovely jubbly, 8.5 out of 10 for me. What are, What's your rating for Chelsea's transfer window? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear how you're rating it out of 10 and give me your explanations and reasons why. I'd love to see it. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you did enjoy this video. Much appreciated. And I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new video. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one. Look after yourselves. Take care and peace.